Welcome to the Expansive CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Chapman, founder of Expansive CEO and X Squared Wealth Planning. Buckle in as we explore how to create true prosperity and build a business and a life that expands beyond yourself and makes a dent in the universe. Welcome everyone to this episode of the Expansive CEO Podcast, where today my guest is Natalie Labonte. And I am so excited and so happy to have this conversation uh, because Natalie is this magical creature. And you'll see what I mean when she starts talking and introduces <laughs> herself. Um but just as a quick overview, she is a divine feminine priestess and sacred space designer dedicated to helping others activate their sovereign divinity through spiritual coaching and feng shui design. She works with heart-centered professionals to explore the beliefs and patterns affecting their mind, body, spirit, and space so they can manifest the desires and reflective space of their sacred heart. And Natalie, I wanted to say one of the reasons I'm so drawn to you is because you've got the mind, body, spirit, and space, right? So it's mm -hmm. like you're tying everything in together in your business in a very similar way, right? Where I work with finances, but it's like mind, body, spirit, and money, right? We can't leave all of the other pieces out. We can't just look at the money. And for you, I tell me if I'm, I'm off base here, but we can't just look at the space that Absolutely. you're in either. Right. And so that combination of bringing it all together is what I love. Um, and I think is so important, this integration, which we're going to talk about a little bit later too, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm going to kick it over to you. Tell us more. Who are you and what do you love and why do you do what you do? Oh my goodness. Well, Hannah, thank you so much. You are equally a magical divine creature. <laughs> I'm so happy we got to, you know, connect because I, I, I do feel like we have such a, a similar just ethos and way that we, we connect the world around us and, and how we bring that mind, body, spirit space. Well, for me, mind, body, spirit space, but for you, mind, body, spirit, money, like looking at those interconnectedness mm -hmm. and you know, I'll share how I, how I even got on this path. So to kind of kick it way back, I, back in 2014, that was really the point in my life when I went through a major spiritual awakening. It was at this time where all of these things seemed to be crumbling around me. And I just had this moment where I was sitting in my living room and the sun was shining in and it was like, this light switch turned on. And I, I, and I always say like love and bliss are words that come up, but it, that wasn't even enough to describe it. But the message that came through was that I was here for a reason. I didn't quite know what the reason was, but I had to get a move on and I had to start looking at energy in a completely different way. And mind you, I wasn't even like spiritual, like none of that was my jam. Um, <laughs> I, I, I really wasn't looking for it. But in my heart, I knew it was like, oh, no, 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 I have to do this. This is, this is game time. And it really brought me on this beautiful journey, first starting with the mind, body, spirit connection, because I started to recognize in my corporate job, the ways where I was honestly my own worst enemy. I, I, I truly would make myself miserable. Um, you know, I'm going to bring in the four agreements. So that was like a life changing book for me. Me too. We could talk a, a whole episode <laughs> on four agreements. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. But like, I, it wasn't until I read that book specifically that suddenly I was like, oh my gosh, I am taking things personally. I am making assumptions. Um, you know, even with like the impeccability of my word, the words that I'd be thinking in my mind, you know, I'd be replaying conversations in my head at the end of the day, you know, it's like, why am I doing this to myself? And so after reading that book one weekend, it was like, I did a complete 180, like my job didn't change, but I changed. And I started to find this, this 
purpose in what I was doing. And I wanted to uplift others on my team because misery loves company. And I, I found like, it was just this, you know, this way of being that I was like, I'm not signing up for that anymore. And I'm not contributing to that. I want to, I want to show up in a much better way than I have been. And so that brought me, you know, into coaching and mentoring and, and leadership opportunities. But then where the feng shui came into play was a, it was a little bit different where, well, actually not so different in terms of the energy. It was kind of like a download, but I literally was just sitting, working away at my desk. And all of a sudden I had to get out a pen and paper and start writing. And the message that came through, whether it was, you know, God, the universe, my higher self, it was just this pure information that was coming through. And the information that came through is I was meant to be helping people honor and recognize the connection between mind, body, spirit, and space. And suddenly it was, things were coming into play where I was, I could see why I went down certain paths. And funny enough, I initially was going to go to college for interior design, but I went a totally different path instead. And I'm like, how magical that that's coming, that passion that I had from when I was like a child and a teenager was coming back around. But when I tuned into it and because like, I, I always, as an intuitive, like I feel like I I'll feel into options and I felt into that interior design option, like getting a certificate. And it was like, no, that's not it. But then feng shui popped into my mind and I'm like, Oh, I've heard of this before, but I don't know anything about it. Like, let's, let's dive in. So I started researching and the moment I came across the International Feng Shui Guild and I started learning more and, and kind of looking at where it's, you focus on, of course, like the balance of yin and yang, you know, that masculine, the feminine, the active, passionate with the restful, receptive, regenerative, like all of those facets come together and, and the balance of the elements. I was like, my heart was singing. Yes. But the amazing, just like cosmic beauty about it was that the symbol for the feng shui guild was a symbol I've been drawing in my notebook for six months prior. And I, weird. <laughs> I know I had no idea, but I just took it as one of those things where it was like, okay, yep. I am I'm, I'm in this. So like, <laughs> thank you universe for, for that. Let's go. But the really interesting thing was at the time, so this is my first kind of foray into feng shui personally. I didn't even think I was going to be able to take the certification course that I found and to study it because for the past, the two years prior, so from 2015 to 2017, when we bought our home in 2015, suddenly we were draining money left and right. And we just could not hold on to it to like save our lives. And when I started diving into feng shui and learning more about the Bagua map, that was when I discovered that our wealth gua was that was where our bathroom was and that equates to the draining of money mm. but I took that opportunity to get curious it wasn't from a place of oh like my home is doing something to me and like I need to move or whatever it was like let's let's dive into this a little bit further what is my home trying to show me and what was really magical, that was where the mind, body, spirit, space connection started to really cement and like come into my reality where I, I started to see that I needed to be looking at those layers. It wasn't just the space itself, but looking at, so like, I'll start with the body component, the body, how I kind of look at it is like, what is tangibly manifesting in my world right now. And at that time, that was when we had to get really clear and sober of what was happening with our finances. And I'm going to not going to lie. We were, uh, 
<laughs> we were not budgeting well. We were impulsively spending. Um, and we, you know, we were going out to eat way too much. It was like one of those times where we really had to get clear on the numbers. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was a really important part to, you know, cause yeah, okay. You can focus on the spiritual, but if you're not getting clear on the tangible of what's, what's actually happening, the spiritual part or focusing on manifesting, like that's, it's not going to work. Let's say you did manifest. If we manifested like $5,000, well, is that really going to change how we are even acting with money? Like my relationship with money. Oh, you are. I, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. Cause you are Please, touching yeah. on something so important. Right. And yeah. one of the things that's so important for me is, is the connection, right? Yeah. That we can't, like you're saying, it's not just about the space. It's not in my, my world. It's not just about the money, mm. but the awareness, right. That what, what's showing up in your world is pointing you towards more awareness of mm. how you're spending your money, right. That's a really good one or how you're investing your money, um, how you are, you know, feeling about your income, your revenue as a business owner, like the emotions that come up, right? What's actually physically happening in your world yes. is pointing us back to pointing us back inside. It's not, mm. not necessarily the other way around first, right? It's like, right. let's take a, let's take a minute to just survey the landscape, what's going on in your world. And then we can look inside and see, you know, what connections there are spiritually, emotionally, to mm -hmm. what's happening on the outside world. But yeah, exactly the same with like the uh, money coaching. I've talked about this on the podcast actually recently, like the money coaching space where it's like, just manifest your way into six figures or, you know, it's all about mindset and nothing else matters or the divine feminine, like just be in flow and don't ever, you know, don't ever push, right? All of those things like, you know, that doesn't speak to, the tangible application, mm -hmm. the implementation, right. Of the awareness. If we're just aware of everything and we don't ever take aligned action, we're not going to actually achieve. And I, I put achieve in quotes too, but we're not going to experience. That's the better way to put it. We're not going to experience what it is that we're here to, to fully embody and experience. If we don't pair that aligned action with that beautiful awareness. I, you said that so beautifully. Um, and that, that is, well, let's look at the energy of yin and yang in feng shui. Yang is the action. It's the passion that's related to like the, the masculine and the yin is that intuitive, the listening and, and I will even say in my spiritual journey, I've experienced this myself where it is, I love being in the divine feminine flow and just like meditating and, you know, being in ritual, but there's the actual, okay, you receive the information. Now let's go do something with that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is why we're <laughs> friends. I love that. I'm the same. <laughs> exactly. Well, and so for, so with that, the looking at the tangible, what is manifesting in my world? You know, we, we had that opportunity where it's like, okay, we need to get clear. What's, what is actually happening? What is our, our bank account reflecting in terms of our current relationship with wealth, with resources, um, you know, even with discipline as well. And like having that intent focus, like is going out to eat, you know, three, four times a week. Is that really where I want my money to go? Like, honestly, no, it's, it's not. I love going out to eat. Don't get me wrong, but I have other, other items or not even items, but they're just desires that are calling me forward. Or it's like, you know what, that's where I want to place my attention and my resources. And so that's where from a body, a physical, tangible perspective of like, gaining that clarity 
I think is huge. And then of course, taking the appropriate action, like for, for us, we then completely shifted how we, you know, minimizing the amount of times we're going out to eat, trying reducing the, um, impulsive spending, which can be so easy shopping online. Um, you know, we, we started making those shifts, but then this is where the mindset piece really arose where I started to become conscious of belief systems that were were operating in my mind and I think you know as as we kind of talk about this it's not from a place of blame or shame judgment we're all doing the best that we can and we're all like being human there's a lot that we're navigating like just incarnating into this world, there is trauma. And so I share that because I started to recognize some beliefs and patterning that were showing up like in my ancestry. And, and so like, for example, um, I became aware of kind of like the scarcity consciousness of like, there's never enough money or I could lose it all at any moment. Like th there just was never going to be the place where it's like, oh, I feel safe and I feel secure. And when I started to become aware of that, it, it, it really, it took my breath away because I think sometimes we just will be on autopilot and it's like, that's just the way we're operating. And then it's like, whoa, hold on. This is a program that I don't need to work from anymore. And then I'll share another kind of operating system of belief that I started to become aware of was this, if I pretend there's not a problem, there's not a problem. <laughs> how how it, was, it was so interesting kind of looking at these just different dynamics and way that they were playing out, um, you know, in my life and, how, you know, the scarcity consciousness can almost create like this hyper focus of, uh, and then this reactive response to money. And then this other, you know, belief system that I became conscious of, of like, well, I just don't need to look at what's happening. <laughs> that's okay. And it was like, no, that's not being empowered. Right. Like that's not being in your sovereignty. And not being in a healthy relationship with money, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'll say this is like a sidebar. Um, I recently, or this is like, maybe like in the past year, did um, a free course with like Kate Northrup on her relaxed money. And there was one big thing that was like, just like this mic drop, like, oh my gosh, it was, it was such a such an epiphany for me where I was talking about the relationship with money. And like, when we try to control money, would you do that with a person or if a person's trying to control you? Like if you feel like money's in control of you, is that really a healthy relationship? And I, I was just like, Oh my gosh, <laughs> hmm? that, is, that is such a powerful way to start looking at not only the mindset that we have with money, but like the, the spiritual component too. But circling back to like my mindset pieces that kind of came up to be witnessed and to be healed, I really took that as a time where I was like, okay, this was a mindset that, you know, may have served me up until this point. Um, but I'm choosing now to enter into a different, a different relationship with money a different perspective of really working with this energy because money, money is energy. That's really yeah. all it is. And, um, in that beautifully integrated with the spiritual component where I started to witness this, um, this interesting dynamic I had with money, whereas it, I just felt like I couldn't, um, there was that like control, that control piece. And 
also knowing and, and coming to terms with like money is meant to ebb and flow. We are meant to receive money and receive it with grace, but also give it out yes. with grace. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be as emotionally charged as the way as it was at that time. And like, I'll give, I'll actually give you an example. This kind of crosses over with the mind and spirit, but I became conscious of a pattern at that particular time where the moment money would come into my bank account, I paid a bill immediately. It was like, I didn't even allow myself to be with money, even though the bill wasn't due for several weeks. Like I didn't even allow myself to just be with the energy of money and to be in that abundant space. So from a spiritual perspective, that's when I made the commitment to say, I want to create a safe space for money to flow into my life. I am creating containers where I can honor this energetic resonance and where I have a healthy relationship. I'm not trying to push it out the door or think that's like the only goal of money is that it's only meant to flow out. No, no, no. Let's, let's be in the ebb and the flow and start to just create that, um, that beautiful co-creative dynamic. Mm -hmm. And it was such a beautiful experience. And the very last piece of that was space. That, that was the last part because, you know, I talk about this with my clients where if we just focus on the space and you're ignoring the mind, body, spirit portion, I, you know, we're tying back to what I said earlier. Okay, great. Maybe you could manifest some quick cash, but that's not going to be a long-term solution until you address those other facets that are happening physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. all of them intertwine together. So the beautiful part though, was when I was looking at our bathroom, um, it was very bare bones and we didn't have any money. Like we had no money for me to be like, I'm just going to renovate it or something. It was like, but what I, I could do, and it was like, just make some small changes essentially to solidify and actualize in our physical environment, to reflect in our physical environment, the changes that I was making on my physical, emotional, mental, you know, spiritual levels, that mind, body, spirit, and actualize it in the space. Mm. So the it was just several small changes where it was like, okay, let me, let me, you know, put some, there's what's called the red ribbon technique in feng shui, where you tie red ribbon around a drain. And it's essentially to symbolize that we're, I'm no longer allowing like healthy energy to drain away. And, and then a couple other, I, I think I put in like an orchid in the bathroom and like maybe a couple of crystals, just something to kind of give me that feeling of like, of abundance of that, you know, kind of like luxurious experience. And the beautiful thing is, so once I would really reflected and looked at, okay, these are all the areas and ways I can now come into better harmony in congruence and alignment and a healthy respect and flow with how we work with wealth and abundance. Once I focused on that and then worked on the space, <laughs> the beautiful thing was that two weeks after that, my husband ended up getting like this way better paying job and our money situation, it was like, it did a complete 180. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I found that like has happened with uh, two weeks always seems to be like this magical turnaround time for not, you know, not to say that there's always divine timing and, and things do happen, but like for whatever reason, two weeks seems to be like this flow between making those changes. Um, but what was beautiful was that I then had the money to take the feng shui certification course. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I'm like, there's something here. I, I'm, I'm in on this, like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. I love, I love that aspect of 
like, here are the shifts that you can make. Because what I'm even hearing um, in this story is it's not that just the bathroom being in that particular area of the map was a bad thing, mm. right? Like you said, it's like, no, you don't have to like rip out your bathroom and put it somewhere else. Right. Because money does flow. Yeah. Money flows to and through us. Like we are meant to be a conduit. We are not meant to be a vault or a, you know, a dragon's horde of, you know, like, <laughs> like we're just going to keep it forever. Right. That's not what this is about. Money is meant to flow. And so mm -hmm. if you honor the flow of money, the flow of energy, the flow of water, literally through your bathroom, right? Like mm -hmm. those things all seem very connected to me in how we, you know, it, well, like, like if you have a leaky faucet or a leaky toilet, right? Like you're literally like losing money just yeah. from inappropriate flow of water. And all it takes is a small adjustment. Absolutely. Right? And so there's, it's like, it's like pointing to that piece of empowerment um, that, that I think we really need in all aspects to know, Hey, here's this thing that's happening in my life. I am not helpless. I'm, you know, I am able to make different decisions. I'm able to shift, right. Money is draining out of my life too quickly. Oh, okay. Interesting. Let's look mm. at all the components of it and then, you know, like heal all of the pieces. Right. Right. Well, and it's like, the thing I've learned uh, over these past six years of working with clients, it's the, the home, like it's a beautiful co-creative ally where I find if there's an area of your life. So just to, to go over the facets of the Bagua map. So the Bagua map highlights the nine important facets to living a healthy, thriving, bountiful life. So those aspects are career and life purpose, spirituality and wisdom, family and community, wealth and abundance, fame and reputation, love and relationships, creativity and children, helpful people and travel. And then the center of the Bagua map is health. Mm. And, and I mean, that says something because you can't you're, you're not gonna be able to enjoy your money or your relationships or your purpose if you're not healthy and taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. But also notice how wealth and abundance is one of the nine facets. Right. And, but it, it is an important one. So don't get me wrong, but it's, it's one. And what I've found, you know, both for myself and, and for my clients is that our homes as a co-creative ally it, ref it can reflect the beliefs and patterns that are ready to be shifted in our lives. Like you said, it, it creates that like point, that awareness of, hey, while you're here, <laughs> let's look at this. While, while you're in this home, let's look at this area. Because maybe there's been some level of incongruence that's been perpetuating in your life. And I think sometimes too, with how our floor, floor plans line up, when we feel attracted to certain homes, it can kind of highlight to say, Hey, let's, let's look at this. How are you relating to wealth and abundance? Or maybe how are you being in your relationships? Um, you know, for your health, what's showing up in this gua or your fame and reputation. Um, and, you know, I, I say too, for fame and reputation, it's like about how you're being seen, like, what is the legacy that, that you're, you're leaving. Um, but being mindful of that, how your home can both reflect and then be like that living vision board to be like, okay, we're going to focus on all of these facets, you know, the mind, body, spirit space, and we can make some of those changes now in our physical environment to reflect this, this more aligned relationship that you're choosing to co-create, whether it's with wealth and abundance or with the reputation that you're, you're curating, you know, as a business owner or with your life purpose. Like I've, I've often, it's funny. I've worked with people where they're maybe looking for like a career change 
And so we'll work in the career and life purpose squad. And then like suddenly, of course, they had to do the work in their career, make sure they had the appropriate skill set for whatever it is they were desiring. But then like this job offer, like this like mother of all job offers, like would appear <laughs> out of nowhere, but they did the work mm -hmm. also on those other facets, which I, again, it's just, it goes to show how important that is anytime we're trying to manifest something in our mm. lives. Oh, okay. So we are going to have everything about like how to get in touch with you in the show notes and everything for like for that. If people are listening and like, yeah. okay, I need to understand this more, right? Like, yeah. what does that mean? What is my home? Where, where are the things? Because the thing that really resonates for me too is, you know, being attracted to a mm -hmm. home, right? And like not, um, I think as we, or, or to any space, when we find that space where we're like, either if we're happy or unhappy in our mm -hmm. space, right? It's like pulling different things out of you. You're, you're shifting and growing in different ways, no matter where you are. Um, and it's, and it's illuminating one story that, um, is really interesting for me as my, my family, I am from Arizona, um, Phoenix area grew up there my entire life, went to school, went to college in Flagstaff, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And then my husband and I, my husband mostly also grew up in Arizona. His family is there as well. And when he got into grad school, we moved to Cincinnati for him to go to grad school, Cincinnati, Ohio. And we've been back and forth a couple of times. We've done several cross country moves. So <laughs> we're back in Cincinnati now. Um, and we have been since 2018, but there was a period where Adam felt like it, it broke my heart, but he said he felt like he was rotting here in this place, right? Like this was not his place. And it was it truly broke my heart to hear that because I know how, you know, how much he's like, just wants to be stable for our family and have like a, a safe space for everyone. But him personally, right? He was having such a hard time being here, being away from family. Um, and it was like, not a place that we could shift. We couldn't leave this house. It's the same house that we're in right now. We mm -hmm. couldn't leave at that time, but we could make changes. We could make shifts that would feel more nourishing, right? And help him to feel like he was flourishing instead of dying in this space. And until the time where we can shift again, right? Wherever, whenever, and wherever that is. Um, but to, to look at that, like from what you're saying, it just resonates so much that yes, you can do things with the space, but you also have to have to shift the other parts, do the other work, mm -hmm. shift how you're being, shift how you're showing up um, in order to integrate the transition mm -hmm. into something new. Um, and so, and it still feels like that. It still feels like where we're at right now is not where we'll be forever, mm -hmm. but there are so many lessons being learned in, in this place, literally in, you know, in Cincinnati, in this home. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm just, it's such a fascinating topic to dive into. So we are definitely going to have everything available for people so that they can do that mapping with you as well. And yes. you like me are also multi-passionate, um, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So this is not the only thing you do. And I really, really wanted to touch on some of this other stuff. So we have, we still have plenty of time. Um, looking at, you know, the, the, again, the divine feminine and, um, the work with the Sophia code that you do. Mm -hmm. And I, I spent time listening to the Sophia code earlier this year. And this was another, in our very first conversation, God, we went so deep. Uh, <laughs> it was like, yeah, we did. <laughs> it was intense. Um, because when we talked about the Sophia code, I think I saw your mm -hmm. necklace and I was like, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. And then you mentioned it was a Sophia code. And I was like, I literally just listened to that. <laughs> and 
one of the uh, Sophia Code masters that really, really spoke to me um, the first time that I listened through it was Mary Magdalene. Mm. And then I went on a whole deep dive of like multiple books, like just on Mary Magdalene. Um, and this, this, uh, information. So I was raised, um, like we call it non-denominational Christian. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, not Methodist or Nazarene or Lutheran or Catholic, like all of those other things, being mm -hmm. non-denominational somehow in my psyche um it was planted that those other everything else was wrong mm. all the other all the other types of christianity were wrong <laughs> it's <was laughs> not a great message um and that mary magdalene was a prostitute that was it that was who she was right in the bible as we learned it and mm -hmm. i had learned over the years so i'm i'm almost 40 now i started really deconstructing Christianity for myself in my early twenties, uh, and starting feeling like this, this is not, this does not resonate with who I am. The hatred that I, that I feel in those spaces for any, anything that is other feels very, very, it doesn't feel good in my body. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. And so, you know, that was like, yeah, 1920, especially, um, age 1920, uh, ish. And gosh, almost 20 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> just had that realization right now. Like, wow, that's been a long time. Um, and, you know, so over the years, I've had these different, different pieces kind of fall into my life where, you know, like there's so much more to Mary Magdalene. There's so much more to mm -hmm. the story. There was so much more to the relationship that she had with Jesus. And it was like, oh, this is interesting. I did not learn this right? All the time I spent in church, I did not learn any of this. It was always about how she was, she was a prostitute and a sinner and Jesus saved her and that was it. And then she was the first one to see him after, you know, they rolled away the stone. Um, and getting to dive in through the Sophia code first, and then through, um, I think Mary Magdalene revealed was another one that I read that I absolutely loved. And it was like nourishing to my heart to feel like the integration of, of the, the divine feminine and the divine masculine, right? Mm -hmm. This, that, that they are not, one is not better than the other. One is not more important than the other, awesome. but that they, they are, they're needed, right. To like interlock. Yeah. So, so the other, the other aspects that really, uh, beyond the fact that Mary was actually a very highly, highly skilled, highly trained, highly, highly honored and respected part of her community yeah. right, as a child, like all of that. Um, but even beyond that, like she was, she was the, the grounding, she was the vessel. She was the, she was the divine feminine mm. that was needed to literally integrate that, you know, the higher aspirational, all of those pieces. Right. So in my, my mind, I see it as the divine masculine is the, is the ascension. The divine feminine is the, is the rooting yes. into the earth. Right. Mm. And they are needed together, the earth and the sky, right. Oh, the fire sorry. and the water, all of those. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. I, yeah, oh, we, well, this is one reason why you and I <laughs> <laughs> it connects so well because, oh gosh, well, I, I also somewhat similar, I grew up Catholic, but like you, it was, I had that moment, um, when I was around 10 or 11, where I was like, there's something here that isn't resonating with me. And in over the past, I would say, yeah, nine years I've had to, I definitely have done some like healing work and also coming back to like that Christ consciousness mm -hmm. of recognizing it's a consciousness, right? That Mother Mary, Mary Magdalene, and of course, Jesus were embodying. And what I think is, well, so magical, especially with this Mary Magdalene thread. So I feel like in some ways, this, this kind of ties to the fact that we need to become aware of like what's happening in our lives. So this year I was 
drawn to go on a pilgrimage to France. Uh, and it was very interesting because I actually like, I loved Mary Magdalene. Like I said, I read her chapter, but I still had this like weird, like push pull. Like I, I don't know. It was a really interesting thing, but I knew in my heart I needed to go on this pilgrimage. And it was such an incredible journey. And, and clearly I needed to go to France to have this breakthrough with Mary Magdalene. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the big, um, or actually there's, there, there's several, but two things, like when we are when you're talking about the divine feminine and like, just like the, the rooting, um, you know, with the earth and like that womb space, when I was on a train out to, um, Rachmador, France, and I was going to visit this black Madonna shrine. And at that moment, I knew I'm like, oh, I'm this is a part of me like entering, like almost kind of going through a quote unquote descent, mm -hmm. which more so means like needing to work with that, um, with the love and the mercy, the tenderness, compassion of the dark feminine to look at the spaces and places within me that I've been too afraid to look at. Mm. And one of the big things, so I had this beautiful healing moment at the shrine with the Black Madonna and Rockamador. It was absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> I can't wait to go back. I wasn't even there 24 hours, but, um, but then I was, I went for this Magdalene heart immersive. And after the immersive, like I did feel this, like this deepening and connection with with Jesus, with Joan of Arc, with Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary. But when I went after that, I went to this really sacred site. Um, and everyone, I don't, my French is horrible. My last name is leading you astray. I <laughs> really don't speak French, but there's this place, it's called uh, Saint Maximum and Saint Bomb. Saint Maximum, it's supposed, it's where the skull of Mary Magdalene is because the Marys went to France after they fled Palestine and after Jesus' ascension. And so they taught there. But so in this church, I had this incredibly just raw, like breaking open with Mary Magdalene, where I I just I had to sit in front of her statue and I just wept like I there was so much that needed to come up but like the big thing that came up that I was so unconscious of was actually this level of unworthiness that I was feeling both in actually working with her because like this big message that came through was like I am the I am one who works alongside you like mm. I'm I'm doing this work with you there's not this like hierarchy that you know traditional religious constructs or hierarchy like creating that separation between us and like our source right um but then becoming conscious and aware of unworthiness and I think a part of that too and how it ties beautifully in our conversation is how that can affect our relationship with money and how we are attracting um it, it was it was such an eye-opening yet oh I, like it, it felt like this lightning recognition like <laughs> all throughout my body of oh my god like this I want to take more trips like this like I want to <laughs> bring me like on all even though it was challenging to, to go through and just like have that gold and to have that like deepening connection with like the holiest parts of you and, and really all parts of your whole, it's just like bringing it back into that wholeness. Like we we're talking like the divine masculine and feminine, no matter um, your gender or how you identify, we embody that yin, yang, masculine and feminine. It's, it's a, um, a beautiful way to work together where the feminine helps to intuit. it. And I mean, gosh, Mary Magdalene was, quite the priestess like high priestess in her own rights like she was doing incredible work alongside Jesus 
and Jesus beautiful. I feel like he was such a beautiful embodiment of both divine masculine and divine feminine, just a level of compassion yeah. that he had, you know? So it's like, so just seeing the ways that how everything is so deeply connected. And, and I even think of like in the Sophia code with mother Mary's chapter, the way of the rose where it's, mm-hmm. you don't have to banish your thorns, your humanity to behold your divinity. In fact, it's all, it's the whole, it's the unification. Like when we can work from that place of the unified self, which us looking at the mind, body, spirit, space connection, that's working from a unified space where we're no longer in this like inner war with ourselves. And I, and I feel, yeah, Mary Magdalene is such an incredible mentor and mother Mary, especially like they are both incredible divine feminine mentors and like loving your whole self, Mm -hmm. having courage to maybe look at those spaces where it's like, I don't want to really look at this right now. I've had plenty of those moments in my life uh, where it's like, do I have to? But sometimes there is like a, there is like a divine timing where certain things happen. At, like you, you finally feel ready or you have the skill set uh, to look at certain facets, but they're just incredible mentors to support you. And I love working with them like in spaces too mm. and, and pulling in divine feminine mentors to, to, you know, provide guidance and wisdom. Like, I think it's so cool when we can co-create from like that spiritual level beyond what our ego structures may be thinking we should create in our space. It's like, oh no, let's, let's go from a divine perspective. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So with that, tell us more. You have a virtual Sophia circle journey starting um, in December. So yes. in December, 2023, tell us more about that. What are you facilitating? Who needs to be there? Like all of that, mm. what's going on? Absolutely. Well, so this is going to be a year long journey going through the 13 chapters of the Sophia code. And what I love about the Sophia circle journeys is that it's a beautiful way to integrate and be in community as you're going through. <laughs> These are like the initiations <laughs> that you go through are, um, you're not the same person on the other side. There really is this uh, beautiful awareness, this um activation, this coming home to remembering your innate sovereign divinity. And that is, I mean, that is the work I'm like so passionate about is helping people remember their innate sovereign divinity and that we're not separate from God, goddess, Sophia, source, creator, universe, you know, however you are viewing that greater creator consciousness we're not separate from that and in fact when we start like living and embodying our sovereign divinity that's going to lead to the changes that we're looking for in our world that's going to lead to the changes that we're looking for and really experiencing like that enriching soulful um bountiful prosperous life like when we can unify our whole self, and again, it's not about banishing our humanity, and it's in fact loving, loving all parts of you, and then really taking that conscious commitment, that courage, that step to just be in your full power. Like that's what the world needs. We need more people to be in that sovereign state, that sovereign power, their sovereign divinity, and really leading from a place where we're focusing on creating those legacies of love Mm -hmm. and a legacy of love. It's, it's sure it can be something really great and grand, but it's also, and just how you live in your day to day 
And so that's what people can experience when we go through the Sophia code. So if it's something that where it's like, Ooh, my, Ooh, my heart right now. Yes. Like this is resonating. Then absolutely. Like let's connect because I, I am so, I'm so excited because we're also starting on the winter solstice when I was like mm -hmm. tuning in, I was, I was like, what, you know, when should the start? And it was like the solstice. And I just feel like there's something like really powerful happening with this journey and like just anchoring, um, you know, and remembering our innate light that we are. Mm. Oh, I, I got goosebumps, I think like six times, uh, <laughs> through our conversation today. So I'm going to point that out. Uh, seriously, just like, yeah, the, the energy, the feeling of, you know, resonance, all of that. Um, so Natalie, thank you for being here today. And I just appreciate you so much and your connection and your heart. Um, and just the love that you exude. It just, it just pours off of you. Um, so, oh my goodness. well, so thankful. Thank you. Oh, I'm, and I'm immensely grateful that our paths crossed and just that there's just like deep coherence and resonance, like within our work. Cause I, I know you're doing such holy and sacred work and helping people, you know, bridge those connections between mind, body, spirit, and money and mm -hmm. how they can be in their healthy flow. So Thank you universe for this. <laughs> right. So beautiful. Yes. And all of your, all of your connection information is in the show notes. Seriously. If you have any questions, if you're listening and you have any questions about either feng shui, um, or the Sophia code circles, reach out, reach out. I highly, highly encourage it. Um, and if you have any questions for the podcast, anything else, like, should we do another episode, right? Like tell us and, and we will, talk about more of this, maybe the four agreements, right? All of Ooh, that. So much stuff. I'm we down. About, right. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you again, Natalie. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. That's it for this episode. Thanks for listening and be sure to like, and subscribe. And again, if anything resonated with you from this episode, I would love to hear from you. Email me at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at expansiveceo.com and tell me about it. And if you're ready for your greatest expansion, you can find ways to work with me at expansiveceo.com and at xsquaredwealthplanning.com. That's X, the numeral two, wealthplanning.com. So until next time, remember that there is enough, you are enough, and your birthright in this lifetime is to be expansive.